The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, today in the gospel we hear that Jesus talked about the kingdom of, of God. Many times Jesus announced the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is near. And today in the gospel, Jesus take uh, two parables for displaying the kingdom of God. The first parable is the men scatter the seeds in the, in the land. After days, the seed sprout and grow. And he know how. The other parable is the feed of mustard. This seed is a small seed, but when the, this seed is sowed in the soil, this seed become a big tree. Jesus in two parables, explain the importance the kingdom of God in our life. I want to to reflect in the first parable when the man scattered the seed in the soil. This is a a normal process in the agriculture. You cannot put the, the seed in whatever soil or whatever ground and hope that this seed sprout and grow. No, because it's a process. The first step for the process is we must move the land. Some people use right now the tractor to, to move the land. After the second step, we must clean the land. It is necessary to remove the things 
that can prevent, prevent the growth of the seed. After is very important, water the land because the water helps help so that ground is fertile. Finally, the land is plowed to make the furrows where the seed will be sown. The same process is in our life. God put the seed in your heart. God do his part. Now we must do our part. We need to prepare our heart because the this way the seed will produce bear fruit in our life. It's necessary prepare our heart, prepare our soul, prepare our life to receive the seed in my life and produce bear fruit. When, when we start or beginning the Mass, the priest said, we are to prepare for celebrate these mysteries. Okay? When beginning the Mass, we prepare our heart for celebrate this Mass and receive the grace of God in my life. Every day in our life, we need to prepare our heart. This, the, what, the, what way? When I remove the land in my heart, when I remove the land, I can to clean my heart, the selfish man, the anger, the hate, the whole bad feelings in my heart. We need to take out whole bad feelings. After, we need to water the land. We need to water my heart. What is the water? It's the grace of God in my life. We need to water my heart. Finally, is my heart is plowed, is to prepare for the put the seed. Then we can to produce beer fruit in my life. This is a, a beautiful image for the the man scatter. You imagine, <coughs> see? The, the, this man is God. God scattered the seed in your heart and your life. We need to produce bear fruit. Because we need to, to work every day for, for my land, for my soil, for my ground, for my heart, produce bear fruit or many fruit and offer to God. For other part, uh, we we pray many times. The Our Father pray, and in the in the, this prayer, we we said, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come." God wills that his kingdom come. We pray this in our Father. What does it mean when we pray for his kingdom to come? First, it means that God wants to come and dwell within us. 
establishing his kingdom within our hearts and souls. We must become living members of his kingdom, and he must be our ruler and guide. Second, we understand this to be the establishment of his laws and will in our world. This means that the social, political, and cultural order must be transformed by God's grace so as to participate in and bear the fruit of his kingdom. We had work to do. Third, it means that we anticipate the final and glorious coming of his kingdom when Jesus returns in splendor and glory. In the end, all things will be transformed and God, and God will bring forth his final judgment upon the world, making all things new. Finally, I invite you to our prayer this week to ask God to grow in faith every day so that we can live the kingdom of God in us.